Namaste, Bittia. Amesha Khush, Bittia. A very good morning to you all. Myself, JV and Dr. Ravi Chen, Associate Professor in HOD, Department of Practice of Medicine in Faculty of Homeopathic Science at Jyoti Vidya Peet Women's University, Chepa. In this series of lectures, we will be discussing about various diseases related to malignancies. So, in short, we are going to discuss about oncology from this particular lecture. So, what is oncology? What are the different types of cancers? How to investigate and the management of cancers we are going to discuss in this particular lecture. So, let's start with oncology. What is oncology? Oncology is a branch of medicine that deals with the study and treatment, diagnosis and prevention of cancer. So, in oncology, it is a branch of medicine that is dealing with the study, the treatment, the diagnosis, the prevention of cancer. <clears throat> a medical professional who practices oncology is known as an oncologist. The, uh, the name is having an entomological origin from the Greek word onkos means tumor, volume or mass. Now the cancer cells possess a unique characteristic. The cancer cell consists of uncontrolled purposeless proliferation of the cells. So in case of oncology, there is uncontrolled purposeless proliferation of the cells that we see. They have the capacity to invade the surrounding tissues and penetrate the wall of the blood vessels, lymphatic to spread to the other sites. <clears throat> what is the incidence of uh, cancers? Worldwide incidence of cancer is uh, around 10 million new cases per year, with 46% are the developed are seen in the developed countries. <clears throat> the mortality is high with more than seven million deaths per year. The most the most common solid organ malignancies arises in the lung, breast gastrointestinal tract. The most common form of worldwide cancer is the skin cancer. Now, what are the factors affecting oncology? Cancers are multifactorial. The majority of the cancers do not have a single cause, but rather they are resulting from the complex interaction between the genetic factors and exposure to the environmental carcinogens. Now, let us try to understand about the cell cycle. There is proliferation of both normal and cancer cells. It is dependent on the progression of the cell cycle, which consists of four phases. The two are the functional phase, which include S phase and M phase. The two are the preparatory phase, that is known as G1 phase and G2 phase. So the functional phases are S and M, and preparation phases are G1 and G2. The cell cycle is regulated by two families of the molecules, known as the cyclins, and cyclin dependent kinase. There are multiple checkpoints for monitoring and regulation of the process of cell cycle. The cell cycle is also regulated by various genes which prevent the progression. It includes P53, P21, P16. These play an important role in prevent, uh, tumor prevention and are also known as the tumor suppressor genes. Now, what are the importance of cell cycle? Cell cycle is used to develop chemotherapeutic agents actively replicating the cells are targeted in the cancer therapy. DNA during cell division is susceptible to damage or radiation. The, chemothera the chemotherapeutic agent includes anti-metabolites such as azathioprine and methotrexate that prevent the purines and pyrimidines from becoming incorporated into the DNA during the S phase of the cell cycle, thereby arresting the cell division. <clears throat> the vinblastin and vinfestin inhibit the assembly of tubulin into the necrotubules, hence disrupting the M phase of the cell cycle. The anti-cancer drugs such as antibiotics and alkylating agents affect the cell division by variety of mechanism. Now, how does the regulation of cell 
uh, cancer cell growth takes place. The abnormal regulation of the cell growth in cancer can occur as a result of several mechanisms. Number one, activation of the cell growth. Number two, inhibition of the tumor suppressor gene. Number three, avoidance of apoptosis. And number four, maintenance of the telomeres. So regulation of cancer cell growth takes place by the four mechanism. Activation of cell growth, inhibition of tumor suppressor gene, avoidance of apoptosis, and maintenance of the telomeres. <clears throat> number one, activation of the cell growth. Many cancer cells produced growth factors which drive their own proliferation by a positive feedback loop, a process known as autocrine stimulation. Example include tumor growth factor alpha and platelet derived growth factor. The result, this result in abnormal cell growth in response to the psychological factors, stimulation, or even in the absence of growth factor stimulation. Next is the inhibition of the tumor suppressor gene. There are several proteins that inhibit the cell growth. These are inactivated by loss of functions, mutations, or the level reduced by the diverse mechanism. Next is avoidance of apoptosis. The evasion of the apoptosis, evasion of the apoptosis is a common finding in cancer. It occurs through the altered activity or loss of function or molecules that take part in the apoptotic process. Next is the maintenance of the telomere. A cancer cell can replicate in, at infinite number and times. This is associated with maintenance of telomere length. Next is angiogenesis. Malignant tumors need to acquire a network of blood vessels for continued growth. This process is known as angiogenesis and it is dependent on the production of angiogenetic growth factors by tumor. Vascular endothelial growth factor and platelet-derived growth factors. Next is immune surveillance. The immune system is thought to protect against cancers via continuous surveillance program which eliminate the cells that have undergone malignant transformation. The tumor constantly shed surface antigens into the cir circulation. They evoke a response from the immune system, including the recruitment of cytotoxic T cells, natural killer cells, and macrophages. And now we come to the determinants of the cancer. The majority of the cancers do not have a single cause, but rather are result from the con uh, complex interaction between the genetic and the exposure to the environmental carcinogens. The majority of the factors includes environmental factors and genetic factors. The environmental factor that predispose to fact, uh, cancer includes occupational exposure, chemicals, cigarette smoking, viral infection, bacterial infection, parasitic infection, dietary factors, radiation, inflammatory diseases, and hormonal factors. So the environmental factors that predispose to cancer are occupational, chemical, cigarette smoking, viral infection, bacterial, parasitic, dietary, radiation, inflammatory disease, and hormonal factors. There are various genetic factors which includes various genes like BRCA12, important one are APC, P53, NAF1, NF2. Now the classification of Now, let me show you the classification of the, uh, in case of oncology, there are different type of classification for the cancer grading, but the most common variety that is uh, followed is this one, which I'm going to show you, TNM classification. So, this is the TNM classification. And it is represented in three ways. Number one, there is tumor size. Next is number of lymph node involvement. And the third one is the presence of metastasis. So this is basically the TNM classification that is most commonly seen. Uh, the grades here range from Tx to T3 uh, based on the size of the lymph node. And X to N3 based on the involvement of the lymph nodes, the number of lymph nodes. 
and mx to m1 that is uh, on the basis of involvement of the metastasis whether the metastasis is present or not <clears throat> Now, what are the investigation, common investigations that can be done in case of oncology in order to make the diagnosis and to plan the most appropriate management, information is needed on the type of the tumor, the extent of the disease as assessed by staging investigation and patient's general condition or any comorbidity. Histology consists of light microscopy with immunohistochemistry, estrogen receptor, and progesterone receptors, alpha fetoprotein, and prostate specific antigen, etc. The electron microscopy, cytological analysis to demonstrate the typical chromosomal changes. There are various imaging techniques that can be done in uh, the diagnosis of any type of tumor. Imaging techniques play a critical role in oncology, not only in locating the primary tumor but also in staging the diseases, which includes the radiotherapy, ultrasound, computerized tomography, magnetic resonance imaging, positron emission tomography. There are again various types of biochemical markers, which includes alpha fetoprotein, calcitonin, cancer antigens like CA125, carcinoembryonic antigen, human chorionic gonadotropin, prostate-specific antigen, and thyroglobulin. Now let's come to the presenting problems in case of oncology. In the early stage of cancer development, the number of malignant cells is usually small and the patient is usually asymptomatic. But as the tumor progresses, the localized signs and symptoms develop due to the main effects of invasion of local tissues. With the further progression, the symptoms may occur at distant sites as a result of metastatic disease or from non-metastatic manifestations. Now, what are the local manifestations in case of malignant disease? In case of malignancies, the local features include hemorrhage, lump formation, bone pain or fractures, skin abnormality, ulcers, dysphagia, constipation and abdominal discomfort, airway obstruction, strider, cough, recurrent infection, odinophasia, early satiety, vomiting, abdominal swelling, which include ascites. We also have non-metastatic manifestations of a malignant disease, which include weight loss, anorexia, fatigue, hypercalcemia, prothrombotic tendency, ectopic adrenocorticotropic hormone, subacute cellular degeneration, acanthosis migricans, and dermatomyositis or polymyositis. There will be palpable mass. A palpable mass is detected by the patient or the physician, which may be the first sign of cancer. The primary tumors of the thyroid, breast, testes, and skin are detected in this way. The palpable lymph node of the neck, groin, and axilla may indicate the secondary spread of the tumor. There may be weight loss and fever. Unintentional weight loss is a characteristic feature of the advanced cancer disease. Fever can occur at, in any cancer secondary to the infection, but may be primary feature in Hodgkin's disease, lymphoma, leukemia, renal cancer, and liver cancers. There will be finger clubbing. Finger clubbing is a characteristic feature of the lung cancer, and especially non-small cell lung cancer, although benign causes are also recognized. Ectopic hormone production. The first uh, presentation of the cancer is the metabolic abnormality due to ectopic production of hormones by tumor cells including insulin, ACTH, ADH, FGF23, erythropoietin, and parathyroid hormone-related proteins. Neurological paraneoplastic syndromes. These are the group of conditions that are associated with cancer and are thought to be due to an immunological response to tumor that results in damage of central nervous system or muscles. There will be peripheral neuropathy, cerebellar degeneration, retinopathy, lambert eaton syndrome, dermatomyositis or polymyositis. 
There are various cutaneous manifestations of cancer, which includes pruritus. In case of lymphoma, leukemia, central nervous system tumors. Acanthosis nigricans is seen in case of gastric cancer. Vitiligo it is seen in malignant melanoma. Pamphigus and lymphoma. And dermatitis herpeticomus and celiac disease. Now, there are various emergency complications of cancers. The emergency complication includes spinal cord compression. It complicates 5% of the cancers and is common in myeloma, prostate, breast, and lung cancers, which involve the bone. The earliest sign is back pain, particularly on cuffing and lying flat. The sphincter disturbance causing urinary retention and bowel incontinence is observed. Spinal cord compression is a medical emergency which should be treated with analgesia and high dose of steroid therapy. Neurosurgical treatment produces superior outcome to survival. Superior vena cava obstruction. It is another common complication of cancer which occurs through extrinsic compression of or intravenous blockage commonly seen in the lung cancer, lymphoma and metastatic disease tumors. Common presentation includes Edema of arms and face, distended neck and arm veins, and dusky skin coloration of the chest, arms and face. The investigation of choice is CT thorax, and treatment includes high dose of steroid therapy, chemotherapy, and radiotherapy. Common symptoms and physical findings in superior vena cava obstruction. The symptoms include dyspnea, facial swelling and head fullness, cough, arm swelling, chest pain, and dysphasia. The physical findings include venous distension of the neck, venous distension of the chest wall, facial edema, cyanosis, and plethora of the face with edema of the arms. Hypercalcemia it is the most common disorder, uh, metabolic disorder seen in the patients of cancer. The incidence is highest in myeloma and breast cancer and intermediate in non-small cell lung cancer that are uncommon in prostate colon, and small cell lung carcinomas. It is the most commonly due to overproduction of parathormone releasing hormone. This elevates the serum calcium level by stimulating the osteoclastic bone resorption and increasing renal tubular reabsorption of kidney calcium from the kidneys. Tubular reabsorption of calcium. The symptoms of hypercalcemia include drowsiness, confusion, nausea and vomiting, constipation, polyuria, polydipsia, and dehydration. The diagnosis is made by measuring serum total calcium and adjusting albumin. The treatment includes intravenous 0.9% saline to improve renal function and increase urinary ex calcium excretion. The intravenous biphosphonates to inhibit bone resorption. Neutropenic sepsis. Neutropenia is another common complication of malignancies that is usually secondary to chemotherapy but may occur in radiotherapy. Neutropenic sepsis is defined as pyrexia of 38 degrees Celsius for one hour in the patient with neutrophil count less than 1.0 into 10 raised to power 9 per liter. The typical presentation is with high fever and affected patients are often non specifically unwell. Hypotension is an adverse prognostic feature and may progress to systemic circulatory shutdown and organ failure. Investigation includes blood cultures, urine culture, x-rays, swab for culture. The treatment consists of high dose of intravenous antibiotics. The first line of empirical therapy consists of an anti-pseudomonal B, lactam, and a combination of aminoglycoside and broad-spectrum penicillin anti-pseudomonal activity. The sites of metastasis. The metastatic disease is a common cause of death in cancer patients and the principal cause of morbidity. And the metastasis can take place to brain, lung, liver, bone, and malignant pleural effusion. So the cancer cells can spread to the brain, to the lungs, to the liver, to the bone, and it may produce malignant pleural effusion. Now therapeutics of in oncology. Anti-cancer therapy may either be curative or palliative. Palliation is done mostly in case of metastatic disease and the aim of palliation chemotherapy is to produce improvement in the quality of life with a minimized impact of toxicity on the patient 
there is a small increase in survival. Adjuvant treatment, there is administered after the surgery. And the main aim is to increase the disease-free overall survival. New adjuvant treatment, this is also a long-term aim of improved survival, but the case of patient receive chemotherapy, radiotherapy, or hormonal treatment before surgery. The response to cancer and treatment can be assessed and reduction of extent of the surgery is required. The surgical treatment consists of biopsy, excision, or palliation. Biopsy of histological or cytological diagnosis. This can be cone biopsy, image-guided biopsy, or an excision biopsy. Excision is the main curative management of most solid cancers is surgical excision and palliation of the surgical procedures are often the quickest and the most effective way of palliating the symptoms. Systemic chemotherapy. The chemotherapeutic drugs are classified by the modes of action. They have the greatest activity in proliferating cells and provide the rational the use in treatment of cancer. Chemotherapeutic agents are not specific for cancer cells. A combination therapy is given to overcome the drug resistance and to limit the size and effect of different drugs. Mode of administration remains intravenous. Radiation therapy or the radiotherapy involves treating the cancer cells with ionizing radiations, radioactive isotopes or high energy beams. <clears throat> it is useful for localized tumors. Hormone therapy is another commonly used in the treatment of breast cancer and prostate cancer. Immunotherapy, it is profound stimulus to the patient's immune system, can sometimes alter the natural history of malignancy. The most striking example of successful <coughs> immunotherapy is with rituximab in NHL, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Biological therapies to block the signaling pathways responsible for growth of specific tumors. Just, <coughs> so this was all about uh, the introduction to the uh, oncology. From the next lecture, we will be discussing about different types of specific malignancies like breast cancer and other cancers. So this was all for today. The PPT will be available on the portal. And I hope you must have understood the session properly. If you have any query, please mention in the comment box and I'll try to resolve it. So this was all for today. Thank you very much. Have a good day.